Hey, welcome to Let the Light In TV. My name is Craig. Today, we're reviewing the Viltrox Autofocus 35 millimeter F 1.8. Initially, this came out only on the Nikon Z, but it's recently come out on the Sony E-mount. This is a full frame lens. So that means if you're using it full frame, it's gonna be 35 millimeters. If you're using it on an APS-C mount, it's gonna be a 52.5 equivalent. This is gonna run you 400 American. That's about 485 Canadian. Now, this is a full frame lens and let's get into the build quality, all right? Aperture ring, it's um, a little gritty compared to other lenses that I've used. Um, I've felt some nice, oily, smooth aperture rings, uh, adjustment rings, but uh, this one, it's like, it's like paper smooth. It's smooth, but there's a little bit of grit to it. Um, so not the best I've used, not terrible, but it is a little bit gritty. Now, um, it does have a automatic aperture setting, right? You can go f1.8 all the way to 16, and you can flip it over to automatic. And it does have a hard stop there at, at f16. So you're not gonna necessarily by accident, you know, go all the way over. It's got a hard stop, which is really nice. Now, the good news is that the focus ring is smoother. You don't have to worry about the focus ring. That's got that nice, more oily, smooth feel to it. Comes with a lens hood. The lens hood can be reverse mounted for some nice uh, packing and travel solutions. Keep keep your uh, your distance down there. So lens hood, is, it's really big as well, which, help, which helps it outside in the sun. But this is a lens actually that performs really well in harsh light. We'll get into that in just a second. STM stepping motor for focus. The autofocus is really good on this lens. I have found it to be very strong, very quick. For example, you know, if I duck out of frame here and I pop back in, boom, picks it up. There's the eye lock, all right? Travels the eye all the way around. It's good. If I try and obstruct it and we come back, picks it up very quick. So the autofocus is really good. Here's a focus pulling test and you can see that it picks up the focus each time I adjust it very quickly with precision. This is, you know, wide open f 1.8. Uh, the only kind of drawback to the autofocus is it's not completely silent. It's not loud, uh, but there is kind of like a, almost like a crunching noise is, is maybe how I would define it. A little bit of a crunching noise sometimes uh, whenever you're adjusting. But other than that, the autofocus is actually really good. Dustin found the same thing in his photo review. If you want to go check that out, uh, it's a great review and the details of the lens as far as using it for photos. Autofocus is strong though. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, it's got a micro USB port connection in the back for firmware updates. Uh, the connection part of that lens is all metal. Metal construction feels good, looks good, and uh, Viltrox is good about putting out those firmware updates for that USB-C port. Uh, the lens does not have stabilization. So um, if your camera body doesn't have stabilization in it, in regards for video, you know, just, just be aware of that. It does not have stabilization in it. It's got nine aperture blades, but the bokeh looks good. Uh, no problem with the bokeh at all. Now it's a Viltrox. And in my past experience, Viltrox lenses have definitely suffered from chromatic aberrations. There's been a lot of green and magenta hueing and tinges that uh, have been seen. And so I was interested whenever I first got handed this lens of, okay, well, how is this one going to work? Is this kind of maybe going to plague the lens like it has the others? And the good news is that chromatic aberration really seems to be cleaned up in this lens. I mean, it's, you know, you still get some, some minor fringing on the colors, but overall, it doesn't really suffer from chromatic aberration like other Viltrox lenses tend to. This one it puts out a much stronger performance, which is great. That's awesome. Now, that means, you know, you can, <laughs> other Viltrox lenses can go wide open, you know, f1.8, but this one is really strong in not running into the chromatic aberration problems. But what I'm leading into is where you're going to get a little bit of a trade-off is kind of focus within the corners of the frames whenever you're wide open. So you don't struggle with chromatic aberration so much anymore, but you are going to focus with some, with some focus. You are going to, sorry, you are going to have trouble with some focus 
um, precision in the corners. There we go, we got it out. So where is this lens good? Well, as you can see right here, you're not gonna be using it for close-up product shots, or at least close-up product shots of a product that is small. Because this lens, its closest focusing distance is 40 centimeters. So you have, you know, the wide open aperture, which is awesome. And you're like, okay, yeah, you know, let's get close up. Oh wait, uh, you can't really, you gotta get some distance. So if you're trying to get small objects, you're, you're not gonna get them uh, with this one because it's just gonna be too far away if you really want those close up shots. This is gonna be better for portraits. It's gonna be better. It's really strong in outdoors. Here's uh, a little bit of a video of it dealing with flares and the sun. You can see the sun stars there, nice and crisp. And then whenever we move it down and really, you know, go to that aperture of, of 1.8, and you can see me adjusting it here, it deals with the sun really nicely. I mean, it's, it's really smooth. This is very, a very strong lens in harsh, harsh sunlight. It's fantastic. So overall, what do I think of it? I think it's a good lens. I'm really happy to see the improvement in the way that Viltrox is handling the chromatic aberrations problems that they've faced in the past. They've really made an improvement on this lens and I'm really happy to see that. Um, the trade-off here is that there is, you know, some precision problems whenever you get to the corners and the edges of the frame. So that's, that's your trade-off there. Is this lens for you? Well, that depends. When it comes to 35 millimeters for the Sony E-mount, there's a lot of options. Just a quick scroll of B&H shows you there's a lot of options. Now, coming in at, this is definitely the low point on, on the price bar. $400 is definitely the lower end of what you're gonna pay for 35 millimeter on the Sony E-mount. So it kind of depends what you're looking for. So to help you out with that, I do suggest you check out, if you want some more detailed information about this lens and it's used for photos and all the little adjustments that you need to do. Here's Dustin Abbott's definitive review. I suggest you go ahead and check that out because there's a lot of options in 35 millimeters and you wanna make sure that you get the lens that works for you. Tons of options, go check out Dustin Abbott's review of this Viltrox 35, but as well as the 35 millimeter competitors to make sure that you choose the lens that works for you. I'm really impressed with how it works in the sunlight. I'm thrilled that they've done those chromatic aberration uh, corrections. The autofocus is great. These are all pros for it. There's a little bit of a um, sound on focus pulls. Uh, so that's a little bit of a, of a negative. And then your other negative is just um, focus precision as far as the corners. So there you go. There's your info. Buying links are down low. Links to Dustin Abbott is up here. Whatever you wanna do is up to you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.